devil to me, baby Open my third eye That's my baby, she won't She my little Hey y'all, welcome back to your girl's channel. This is Gigi reporting to you live from Gigi's Reality. Y'all, I have nothing else to say but KT, Katie Bag Wig and All gave Ashley the business on the Cayman Islands. I love Katie so freaking much because she is who she is. Like, you can't tell Katie what to do. That bitch got a mind of her own. It's somewhere in space on Venus somewhere. But yet, this bitch is still coming down to planet Earth every now and then, which she does. Should give you everything, y'all. I can't wait to get into it. But first, if you're new to your girl's channel, let me welcome you to Big What's Up. I appreciate you for tuning in. Please hit that subscribe button while you at it. Join the girls fam. And then let me get your name. Put a heart emoji down in the comments so I can shout you out. You know, just to show some love back. You know, what's your name? What's your number? Shouty, give it to me so I can take you out on a date. What you want? IHOP, Waffle House? <laughs> let me quick. Oh, I'm talking about how no niggas be hitting you up at the gas station like that. Um, but yeah, y'all, the Potomac Housewives. Okay, so it opens up. Giselle, she talking with her daughters. They giving her the business over still being a bad mom. Um, she packing for the trip and letting them know how they gonna be staying with Auntie Gretchen. Y'all, with a name like Gretchen, I'm sorry. I automatically think of Haunted House and just, like, speaking walls. Gretchen, like, that Gwendolyn, Eugenia, Gretchen, those all type of names just give me the heebie-jeebies. Uh, but nonetheless, she's talking to her girls about how she's sad about leaving them again. But Robin invited them all out to the Cayman Islands. So we kind of get a flashback of, you know, at the open house, Robin telling them about the girls' trip. Monique can't come because she's about to pop out another damn t member of the football team for Chris. And she, you know, her doctor advised her not to go. Understandable. But Katie's going to come in her place. So Katie's automatically going to be the entertainment for the week. Um, but then, you know, Giselle's getting ready and she's asking the girls for their opinion on bathing suits and her daughters are just as shady as she is. Like, she is raising some shady monsters and Giselle, when they get old enough, they're going to be tearing your ass up. I mean, they're going to be giving you a taste of your own medicine because the way they looked at that bathing suit bottom and was like, ugh, like even dad dresses better than that. I said, no, not Kenneth, not Kenny. I mean, we know he got to dress good and all so he can still affect the women on the congregation. I mean, let me quit. I mean, Giselle, you deserve it anyways. But, um, yeah, so Giselle, she tried to wear her little high bottom, you know, bathing suit piece. And the girl said, skirt, no, mom, not today. So let's move on because Ashley, speaking of getting dressed and packing, she's, you know, going to Michael all sick and whatnot, coughing, passing on tuberculosis to this old ass man while he steady riding that damn mountain mountain bike every time he get into a scene with those two his ass is riding that bike i mean i know he's trying to stay in shape i mean for an older man his body's quite slender i, I it should be after all that shit he be doing on the bike and all the extracurricular activities he be doing at the office uh but you know uh ashley starts filling him in on katie going on the trip and how she's not excited because she got you know, when the Katie talking shit about her and she feels mad because she was vulnerable and I let I let Katie in and Michael's know, you know, you learned a lesson, but hopefully the beach will fix that. And so Ashley Hud, I swear I cringe every time there's any type of like sexual scene between those two. She's like, I got a sailor outfit for the nautical party. You want me to try it on for you? And she did, comes out and has her whole little Sailor Moon shit going. And Michael's on the bike riding talking about, ooh. And I'm just like, it seems, it makes me cringe. It is so incestuous to me. Like, it just, ugh. But, I mean, Ashley, the way that he didn't jump off that bike and tell you the, the production to cut, like a real heterosexual male, because you turned it over, flipped all the out, your booty cheeks out for him. I mean, that's another sign, homie. The fact that he couldn't jump on, get down on it right there, I mean... Maybe you might want to be looking into some other things, Ashley. Um, maybe next time, come out as Superman. Or come out as, you know, uh, Batman, Spider-Man, any type of man. <laughs> um, maybe that'll get a reaction out of him next time. But nonetheless, Ashley's not too excited for the whole Katie situation. Another person not excited for the trip is Karen. She stops by to see Monique. They at the chiropractor. Monique's getting all popped and stuff because she's super bougie in her pregnancy. And, you know, they get done and they start talking about the trip. Monique's like, you know, I'm kind of glad I'm not gone because I really don't want to deal with the Giselle drama after the open house. And she's just like, I'm so annoyed. Like, it just always seems wherever she goes, she brings the shit with her. Because as soon as Giselle walked in the house, 
Monique couldn't even hug her. Monique gets a, oh, uh, three years to the issue. You trying to hug me? And Karen's like, I know. But at this point, like, Karen's just kind of like, you know, I see who Giselle is. I clock her. A zebra never changes her stripes. A leopard never changes its spots. Giselle is always going to be a messy bitch. A messy train that arrives on time. Basically what uh, Karen likes to call her. And I absolutely agree. Um, Karen... She has the right to be mad at Giselle and to never talk to her again because if you ask me, Giselle is not a genuine friend to Karen anymore. Like, I think when Potomac Housewives first started, I do think there was more of a genuine friendship between them two. But I think the more Karen started being, like, a more of a voice of her own and not really taking the shit from Giselle, like, that's when they started butting heads. Giselle does not deal well with other people who are as dominant as her or can handle themselves or can like speak back like she to like she's a, a there's always passive and aggressive people in a relationship that's why her and robin's friendship works better because robin's the passive one and she's the more upfront aggressive one and that's and her and karen just they're just gonna keep it's just gonna keep happening to them but you know karen's like i'm just gonna go on this trip try and keep it copacetic with this hoe uh but i'm not i'm gonna confront her about the whole ig thing because you know, Candace and um, uh, somebody else came back to her and told her about how Giselle was all mad because I was on IG when I decided not to go out and go to the club and shake my titties on the bar with them. And I'm like, I like, yeah, Karen, you get to do what you want to do. If I say I want to go upstairs and relax, so the fuck what if I'm on my IG live? Like, why is that such an issue to you? Like, it never fails that Giselle, when she has an issue with somebody, could pick the littlest thing to make a problem out of. So, obviously, when they get to the Cayman Islands, Karen's going to confront her about that. So, it's the day of the trip. Everybody's getting to the damn airport. Car uh, Katie shows up with her bad wig that just spells stress. Her wigs, like, y'all, I'm not understanding. Like, you know how most people have, like, their wigs, like, on, like, a little mannequin or something? Like, this bitch looks like she pulled them straight out the plastic bag. You know, give them a little shake and a little dust and then puts them on top of her head. Like, that shit looks like a rodent ready to jump off. It is roadkill, Katie, your wigs, dead, kaput. Take them hoes outside and burn them. Um, but everybody's at the airport, and guess what? Where is Robin? Where the fuck is Robin? Like, here we go again, Robin, you late for your own function. Who the hell shows up late for their own function, Robin? Like, you are, the first time somebody's late, it's like, okay, I get it. The second time somebody's late, it's okay, all right, bitch, this is a warning. The third time, like, all right, I'm done. Next time you show up five minutes late, I'm piecing out of this bitch. Like, Robin, I get, like, you got black and white in you, but that black side, that CPT time that you was working on is starting to be a little too strong. I'm going to need you to come out with that Caucasian and be punctual, as they like to say. I was punctual. That's what you need to be doing. So now all the other bitches, they take off and they make it to Cayman without Robin ass. Like, I don't understand why it's taking so long. Robin, you got no hair. You almost bald. You don't really wear makeup like that. It's not like you be dressing down to the gods, down to the boots. Like, I'm not understanding. And it ain't like you and Juan is, like, just having a whole bunch of, like, like, like makeup sex or something, like, before you go in places. Because he too busy, I'll fuck somebody else. <laughs> Let me quit being messy. I mean, but it's the truth. Like, Robin, your ass should be, be the first one on arrival, Okay. So they get to the Caymans, it's real nice and sunny, they start getting in the car and stuff, and automatically, here we go, all hail Giselle, she wants to appoint herself Queen of the Caribbeans, um, and everybody else just literally just like, is quiet, like whatever, Giselle, you know, that's what you do. But Giselle's first thing, a topic of discussion on the bus is, Katie, wig, is your wig dead, honey? And Katie's like, no, nah. Katie, yes, your wig was dead, honey, and Candace killed me in her confession talking my damn I don't even like, I don't even hate Ashley bad enough to give her a wig that looked like that. Candace, I mean, if we want to be real, you ain't giving nobody no wigs because where is, you still split rent with your mama. So obviously you ain't giving nobody no damn weaves, wigs, extensions, half points, like nothing. So I'm just confused. Like, bitch, what? Who's getting hair from you, Candace? I don't ever see no promotion from you, honey. Um... Shit, even Karen's braided wig wasn't as bad as this one, Katie. Like, yo, I, I understand you going through some shit with your whole little custody battle that we became privy to this episode. 
Uh, that should obviously spell stress. You know how people wear everything on their face, but Katie wears everything in her wigs. <laughs> she had that shit, that typical bun she keep doing. She like that part white girl in here still want to do that messy bun, bitch. That's not how it work, okay? You can't do it that way. I'm confused. Like, are you bald, Katie? Like, can you not just like wear your own hair? Like, I think you should have enough hair to at least, shit, a Robin could pull something off. I know you can too. Two French braids never killed nobody, all right? So they get to the hotel, they call Robin, and she decides to actually appoint Ashley the hostess with the mostest. I mean, it's kind of her way of digging at Giselle because we all know she's expecting an apology from Giselle. But Robin, I hate to tell you, when hell freezes over is when you'll get an apology from Giselle. Because if you ask me, she really don't respect you like that. Because if she did, she wouldn't have did that shit in the first place at your open house. Uh, so when you do see her, if you don't get into her ass, if this is basically going to play to everybody's point that they've been saying since season one that you be all up eating Giselle's ass and you always want to claim, oh, no, I don't. But you know, if you don't get into Giselle at this moment, you're going to look like a straight fool and prove everybody right. So Ashley and Robin are sharing a room. Karen and Giselle happen to be sharing a room. And then Candace and Katie. But as soon as Giselle and Karen hear the name together, they kind of put in that fake like, <laughs> I mean, it's cool, but that shit went left because Candace, with her little damn self, talking about, oh, this be perfect. Y'all can deal with y'all's issues now. And literally in the lobby, these bitches start going at it back and forth because Karen, you know, addresses the whole IG situation. She's like, look, Giselle, I heard you were talking about me being on IG Live, and that was very emotional for me. I was thanking people about my, you know, giving me condolences on my parents, and here you are being messy in the lobby. Giselle acted confused, like, what? Where did you hear that at? And she's like, the ladies came back and told me. And I'm like, Giselle, you have amnesia. You got the Ashley amnesia now. Like, you so messy that you forget the shit that you say. She was downstairs and she had an issue. Like, how dare uh, Karen be upstairs talking to people about, oh, being in South Africa and stuff. That's not what I saw. Okay, you saw a snippet of the live. That doesn't mean that she wasn't talking to people. Like, because when you're on live, like, you can, like, see the questions and stuff. Like, Giselle, so what? She was upstairs. Like, whatever she decides to do upstairs is her business. Hell, she wanted to go upstairs and got dang get in a bubble bath and have phone sex with Ray. She could do that. That's none of your business. Like, at this point, quit picking at this woman. So now, Karen and Giselle get into it. Giselle's like, man, I, give me another room. Give me another room. I'm not going to room with Karen. And she's walking away and it actually puts her two cents in trying to defend Giselle's old green-eyed monster ass, talking about, oh, but Karen, can you understand where Giselle's coming from? And Karen said, no, bitch, no. I can do what I want to. If I want to grieve in the way I want to, go upstairs and be on IG Live, a bitch can do that. And absolutely right. Ashley, stay the fuck out because Giselle can handle herself, but you need to quit defending that girl because she really ain't your friend like you think she is. As much as you was getting into Katie ass, Giselle's another one who you need to be getting on. But Candace, she's panicking, talking about, oh my God, you guys, let's get out the lobby. We're scaring the white people. And I'm like, oh shit, like the white people looking, you see the cameras panning. I'm like, damn, here we go. Being the niggas in the lobby acting a fool. I mean, as much as I hate to put it that way, but that's just, that's always the perception. It's like black people can't act in front of white folk or we automatically become nickels. That's what we come, become, no, we come straight on nickels. <laughs> so yeah, so now here it is. Karen's like, look, I can do what I want to. I'm grieving by my parents. And how dare Giselle do that? And Giselle comes running back. Nobody can, uh, nobody didn't understand that your parents died, Karen. Like, and it's not about them. And just, and Karen was like, the fuck it is. And I was like, oh, snap. But nonetheless, hope, like, they kind of, like, go their separate ways. Everybody goes up to their rooms. And at the meantime, they start going down to the beach. And Katie was supposed to stop by Candace's room, right? But she ends up going downstairs. Y'all know Katie's not all the way there. So she's like, damn, I forgot to go to Candace's room. And at this point, Ashley, after she got put all, uh, got you no know, juiced up by Giselle because Ashley was downstairs with Giselle first. And here go Giselle. Oh, are you going to talk to Katie about the situation? You know, calling you dumb and stupid. And, she, and then Giselle's like, well, you know, she brought up the restaurant saying that, you know, um, it was sold and her boyfriend, you know, corroborated. And now she's like, well, of course he corroborated. He's homeless living on her couch. She pays his bills. And I'm like, bitch, you the one to talk. What about your mama? She got a nigga living on her couch right now as we speak. I mean, to be fair, Katie's just the younger version of your mama at the moment. 
So now after G Giselle and juiced Ashley up, here it is. She confronted her, but Katie did not back down. I mean, at the beginning, she kind of denied saying that she was dumb and stupid. But I mean, at the end of the day, they both was giving each other business. They both got their little licks in. You know, uh, Ashley was like, you need to uh, fill the void in between your heart instead of in between your legs while you got this homeless man on your couch. Katie's like, well, at least I ain't with no 80-year-old man. But I was like, oh, Lord, these bitches trading licks. They trade licks like men, uh, Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather. Um, but Ashley, all she kept saying is, how dare you? I've, I've been vulnerable to you. I've let you into my life. And here you go spreading lies. I never told you that me and my husband didn't have the restaurant. And Katie's like, yeah, you did. And she's like, no, I didn't. We said that Brad took it over. Well, bitch, that's the same thing. But then Michael admitted while he was on that damn mountain bike, mountain bike that Brad did, you know, take over the restaurant or buy it, you know, Apples to oranges, Ashley. We know what the fuck it mean. Like uh, Katie said, nobody eating at that damn restaurant anyway, trying to eat kangaroo on the bar. I mean, don't nobody want that shit, okay? So they go to the dinner, and at this point, Giselle and Karen kind of talk. And Giselle is like, look, Karen, what is the real issue? And Karen was like, look, my feelings were hurt. I was feeling judged, and you had no right to do that. And Giselle was like, you know, this does a little fake apology that they always do. Well, I'm sorry if you feel that way. I didn't mean to do that. But you need to learn how to be a friend, Karen. And Karen was like, well, I'll give you a friend, be a friend to you when you deserve it. And I was like, yes, Karen, get at Giselle. Giselle, you don't deserve Karen's friendship. Point for, for, look, so I can't even get it right. The shit's so fucked up. Giselle, you don't deserve Karen's friendship at all, period. And then Ashley's like, that's not how that works. That's not how that works. Try to put a little two cents in. And all the meantime, you not understanding that half the shit that's been going on between you was started by Giselle. But Karen was like, yeah, okay, Ashley, if somebody can repeatedly do the same dumb, like, fucked up stuff to you, you'll be dumb not to sit there and question, you know, you know, their intentions. And she was right. Like, how many times has Giselle been shady? The whole Uncle Ben t-shirt situation. Talking about... How she was, you know, throwing Ashley under the bus, apparently, and then dogging her business. Like, at any point, Giselle is always trying to cap on Karen. And I'm not going to sit there and give you my friendship, and you're not going to give it, return it to me, you know, the same way I give it to you. Fuck no. So then, as they try to restart fresh, Giselle tries to bring up the whole damn Katie and Ashley thing again. Like, well, the reason, you know, Katie, the reason Ashley's upset is because she really was you know, uh, vulnerable to you. And she feels like you uh, turned lies against her and said this. And look, Katie was like, look, bitch, all I'm saying is what everybody else said. Everybody else said Michael was gay. Giselle said it. Karen said it. Candace said it. And at that point, you could tell Giselle's face was like, oh, shit. Like, uh, Giselle low-key wasn't expecting that. She realized, like, damn, I got out in the middle. And she was like, oh, yeah, people were talking and I added on it. So then... Ashley was like, so you added to the fire? And she was like, no, but look, I'm going to say something. And just because it, you weren't there doesn't mean it was behind your back. And I get what you were trying to say, Katie, but the shit was kind of funny. I was like, damn, Katie. Because like on surface level, it's like, bitch, no, yeah, it is behind her back. But when you really think about it, I think what she was trying to say was, yeah, I was saying other stuff, but it's not something I wouldn't have said to your face, basically is what she was meaning. So they get back into the room after they all start fighting and Robin's there. Some little hand note shit happens. So Ashley's speaking slick under her voice. And that's another thing I don't like. Don't be speaking the, the, the subliminal shit, the speaking under your voice shit. That's two quick ways to get popped by me. Like, don't be doing it. Like, if you got some shit to say, say it to me. So then they get upstairs. And at this point, these two bitches start fighting again. Katie's like, talk. I mean, Ashley talking about Katie's toupee. I mean, the shit was horrible, but then, um, you know, uh, Katie was like, oh, uh, no, Robin was like, I'm confused. What happened? And Katie's like, it's all over Michael. And then Robin's like, well, shit, everybody's talking around Michael. And she's like, exactly. Like, Ashley, quit getting on my ass when everybody else was saying the same thing. And I'm like, yes, like, Ashley, you keep wanting to point at Katie, but Robin, Giselle, Robin's only telling you that part of the conversation, but she wasn't telling you about the part how she was laughing, talking about, oh, you might have made an agreement with him. Or maybe you just doing it, you know, for shits and giggles, like to be with him or you in denial. So Giselle is real. I mean, y'all, if we think about all the shit that happened this season, what is the common denominator out of all the, like, the conflicts? Giselle. 
So I'm ready. If, if Robin, if you don't get into her ass next episode, because you couldn't do it this episode, because they um Katie put it into it when she said, "Look, you know what?" After Ash, she was like, "You're weak, and you don't need to be in this group. Basically, you're maybe you're not strong enough to handle it." And Katie and her damn custody battle struggle looking face was like, "You know what, Katie? I, I mean, Ashley, I am going through some shit, and maybe I am vulnerable right now." But if you can't be my friend because of that, then fuck you and the horse she rode in on. I said, damn, Katie ain't no punk. Like, she might be out there. She may be a little bit much. But Katie is Katie, and that's why I love her. She is such a breath of fresh air for this season because, like, ain't, like, there ain't nobody like Katie. Point blank, period. And you know what? So what? She got a man sleeping on her couch. But guess what, Ashley? She ain't got to worry about her man out there grabbing ass or out there at the gay club playing with Tony in the bathroom. Okay? So then um, that's kind of where the episode ends. So you guys, like, it was a little bit merch. Um, especially between Katie and Ashley. But next week is when Robin decides she want to get gutsy against Giselle. But if you ask me from the preview, it looked like Giselle basically shut it down and ain't really say nothing. So um, you guys, tell me what you think in the comments. Who is really at fault here uh, between Ashley and Katie? Do you think Katie is extra messy or was Giselle just starring the pot? Um, in regards to Robin and Giselle, do y'all think Robin should hold this grudge a little bit longer or and like end their friendship on that? Um, okay, who thinks Karen and Giselle can really forge a friendship after this? That's another thing I want to know too. Uh, but that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe to your girl's channel. All right, you guys, I'll see you next week on these Potomac Housewives. Catch you on the flip side. Deuces.